Hello, everyone. You're listening to Those Are the Girls with Mallory and Friends. I'm Mallory. And I'm Freeman. And we are changing culture and bringing back traditional values with a hopefully better sounding mind. Yes, hopefully you can hear me whispering in your ear. <laughs> For those that are um, listening and not watching, you should definitely go over to the YouTube. And even if you don't watch, make sure you're subscribed and like the video. But um, we have a brand new mic. Thank you to the Patreon and Absolutely. for those who order from the merch site. Uh, this is what it is. We're going to have better quality. And I told you guys, I said 2023, we're going to have better quality. Um, and that's what we're doing. So hopefully this mic sounds a lot better and we can get rid of some of the technical issues that we have um, had in the past. And then as you can see, we have a cute little um, picture frame. Let the journey begin. Yes. And I want to shout out my high school best friends because they got me this for my college graduation. And they said they saw it. And Aww, um, yeah, that's really sweet. sweet. Yeah, I love you guys. I don't know if you're listening, but if you are, <laughs> thanks. I hope you see your, I hope you like your uh, thing in the background. And then we're also very sorry about the construction happening. Um, if you can hear it. We apologize. Yeah. Hopefully you can't. We even tried to test it, and then it was like we couldn't tell if we were hearing yeah. it from the like sound or from outside. So, yeah. and if it is, I'm sure it's like in the very back. So, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um. Okay. So, oh, oh we don't have our mics. Um, our little silver mic. Okay. So, to catch up really quick, um, last weekend Freeman and I decided to just go out and have some fun. Um. And we did I bring my mic in? Oh yeah, this is oh yours. this is yours. Okay, do you know no, that's yours? Oh, do you want mine? Yeah, we can both have ours. Um, so last weekend we went out on the town. So Charlotte is called Queen City. A quick little um history lesson about um Charlotte. So Charlotte was actually found by Queen Charlotte. As in found like she, obviously she didn't like come here and go. She didn't Christopher Columbus um Charlotte, but she's the queen of charlotte so charlotte is called the queen city and mecklenburg county for those that don't know we had a declaration of independence before the united states so we have this thing called mech deck day in um mecklenburg county in charlotte where we celebrate our independence uh before the whole united states independence and then like there's like this legend that you can like search and find the declaration Whoa. i think it's, like the original i think the original is missing um, so yeah, just a little bit about Queen Charlotte information. But anyways, we, yeah, so we went out on the town and we went to, um, this really cute place. Why am I? Novelty House. Novelty House. Uh, Novelty House. And, um, it was someone's random birthday party. Kim. Kim. Shout out to Kim. Happy birthday. We love you, Kim. Happy 40th. And the thing was Britney Spears, which if you know me for five seconds, you know, I love Britney Spears. <laughs> Well, old Britney, I pray for this new Britney, but I love Britney Spears' music, and I was like, ooh, this is fun, it was so cute, like, and they gave out these mics, so we were like, well, happy birthday, Kim. Exactly, so we just took them, and those of you who are listening, they're these ridiculous, glittery microphones yeah. that are plastic and hilarious. And they're super cute, and I was like, oh, this is fun. Mm -hmm. They do not work. Um, They're just for show. I'm sure she probably got these from, like... I think they're hollow. Oh, yeah, I think they're hollow. Yeah. She probably, I bet she got these from, like, um, Michael's and then probably, like. Or she maybe just Amazon. Oh, yeah, I guess think? if it's Amazon. Yeah, I guess she could have gotten them from Amazon. I feel like she made this, though. Made the glittery part of it. Really? You think? Maybe? You don't think so? I don't think you so. You feel this like she's just. Bought, but <laughs> okay, I mean. If it looks handcrafted. <laughs> I was thinking so, but yeah, I could that, be. That, no, you could be right. I mean, what what material? I Maybe it's just know. a plastic ball. I was thinking like on top of like a black stick, glittery. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe like they glitterified the ball and then like glued it. But yeah, I, mean, I guess the more sure inspected, someone made it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess the more I inspected, it doesn't really. Well, I don't want to pull it apart. But yeah, so these are our mics that we were like, oh, we gotta tell everybody. It was yeah. fun. If you're looking for a fun girls' night out in Charlotte, um, Novelty House. Mm -hmm. It's great. It is. Uh, anything else happened this week exciting for you? Not really. Um, I'm trying to make some money doing DoorDash, mm -hmm. which is not really that climactic. Although I did get my acceptance rate above 70%, oh. which means I'm getting the quote-unquote high-paying orders. Ooh. Yes. Okay, so that's, that's good. Exciting. 
And um, my property manager was chill with us borrowing her table today. Yes, she was so nice. Shout out to Katie, Katie, friend of the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she was so cool. So, yeah. what about you? What happened this week? Um, I don't think I had anything exciting happen this week. Um, nope. It was actually. I feel like it was a very busy week mm -hmm. for me. Um, it's already Friday. I know. I can't believe you worked it's Friday. Like a bunch. I did. I worked every day this week. Um, so far. So far. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> yep. I worked. I was busy with work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm anticipating a birthday party next weekend. My family has five birthdays in March. Whoa. So we're all getting together and celebrating everyone. So I'm super excited fun. for that. Uh, fun, fun, fun. Yeah. This next weekend, um, or sorry, next week I do, what I do have coming up is I'm going to be speaking at the South Carolina for Life Human Rights Protection Act press conference. conference? Yeah. I say okay. press rally. And I'm like, that's not a thing. Uh -huh. Press conference. I'm um, sorry, in South Carolina. So that's going to be Tuesday. Stay tuned. I'll probably post a lot about that. Um, trying to get this protection, protection for the preborn out there. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you for doing that. Yeah. My pleasure. My pleasure. Well, um, <laughs> after that introduction, are you ready to get into the stories today? Let's get into it. Actually, sorry. I didn't even do any of the announcements. Um, <clears throat> ignore that. Announcements. Don't forget... Our tea party. Thank you, everybody who's already signed up. We already are halfway full. So if you have not gotten your ticket already, go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. And if you're already going to be in town for the Culture of Life Fashion Show, which is that Friday, April 14th, then April 15th, just come on over to the tea party. Hop on over. And we will be at the fashion show. Yeah. So you'll see us. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we'll be at the tea party. Um, so yeah, so get the tickets for that. Um, Patreon, we have a midweek episode up on Patreon, and, um, we are going to have a MD, I believe 98% sure she's an MD, come and talk to us about fertility. Fun. Um, and that is going to be on, um, at the end of this month, and she's going to talk, so we're going to have someone who's a, who does fertility awareness talk on the regular podcast, and then we're going to have someone, um, with an MD answer some really good questions let me just triple check and make sure she's an md well she's a pa sorry she's a pa um and she's going to talk like kind of like behind the scenes answer some questions so if you have questions let us know but that will only be a patreon exclusive the pa so if you have questions that you want to ask her send them to us and if you have questions about fertility awareness you can send them to us and we'll answer the fertility awareness questions live and then the rest will be exclusive patreon so what does that mean, you guys? That means you should join our Patreon. Yep. You could help us have better quality. Mm -hmm. You can also help us continue to get this message out here because I think that's going to be very, I mean, talking about fertility, a lot of people want to know, a lot of people don't know, yeah. and it's going to be very, very important in the next couple of years. So we really, let's do this. Let's and, do this together. And it's such a, like, bipartisan thing, mm -hmm. you know? Nobody likes birth control. Nobody. Mm -hmm. You, like, nobody likes birth control. And I listen to even um, like these, like the Boss Babe podcast, like mm -hmm. that. And she's not, I think she would consider herself spiritual. She's not Christian at all. Mm -hmm. And she's had people on talking about like how bad birth control is. Yeah. So it's getting out there. Not just like, it's not a, a Republican, conservative, right. Christian thing. It's it's out there. People yeah. are trying to ditch birth control. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily know if everybody's moving toward abstinence, but right. the first step is to ditch the birth control. Yeah. Um, and then last, we have our Barbie merch. I just want to let you guys know. It is on the website. We have stickers, little wine cooler things. Um, so cute. T-shirts and other stuff that I can't think of at the moment. But that's all available on the website. And that helps for pay for things like this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. All right. That's officially it. Now, are you officially ready to get into officially ready. the stories? We Let's have some really interesting ones yeah. today. All, all right. right. Here we go. Clink. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> First story. I found this very interesting. I really, really want to talk about it. Especially because it made it to the New York Post. And you would never think that something like this would be on the New York Post. Yeah. Okay. Tw um, this is from the New York Post. 
28 girls hospitalized with anxiety. It's anxiety is in quotes after playing with Ouija board. Mm. Nearly 30 high school girls have been hospitalized with anxiety attacks after allegedly playing with Ouija boards at their school in Columbia. Quote, there were 28 possible cases of anxiety in school students. End quote, said Hugo Torres, head of the Galerius Educational Institute in Galerius, where the incident took place, per James Press. According to the outlet, alarm bells went off after girls reportedly suffered signs of fainting, anxiety, and often symptom and other symptoms at school. They were subsequently admitted to a, a municipal hospital accompanied by parents and school faculty. Info on the students' diagnoses has yet to be released. However, many parents blame the in-school use of Ouija boards. I like copied and pasted. Sorry, guys, I copied and pasted from the article, and I did not realize that it's an in-school use. Anyway, yeah, a Jumanji s pursuit that uses a sliding pointer to spell out messages in mysterious ways. It was created in the U.S. in 1886. Ouija boards have become a fixture in occult lore due to the alleged ability to communicate with the dead. So, so sad. So sad. Um, in school use, that's crazy. That's crazy. Is this, and this is Columbia, the country. Yeah, yeah, Columbia. Yeah, okay. that's true. Not Columbia that we go to once every a month. day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was Columbia, um, the country. But it's just really, well, two, two reasons why I want, well, multiple reasons why I want to talk about it. I think it's interesting that it's made mainstream news in the sense of like New York sure. Post. Um, you saw it on some yeah posts. Daily Mail, I think. Yeah, I saw it on not the Shade Room, but one of those Shade Room like places. Mm -hmm. So people are talking about it. So that's mm -hmm. very interesting. I think the in school part is also interesting yes. because what like what class would that be for? Right. <laughs> and I that mean, doesn't doesn't correlate. Like something's not clicking. Yeah, I am really really disappointed to hear that that was in school use as well. When you said that, I was like what yeah i was like wait let me did i in school use yeah that's what they're saying i just don't understand what would be the purpose of like what class yeah would that be for? i know history like religion but like if it's religious then because it sounds like these people because the fact that you would blame it on a ouija board exactly. what, means that they have some sort of christian upbringing i'm sorry that's what it is people who don't like ouija boards are typically christians I am curious. I wonder if Muslims, how Muslims feel about Ouija boards. I imagine they would be anti. Yeah. I feel like we probably agree on a lot of things until it comes to Jesus. Yeah. So, because, you know, they do the no drinking as well. Well, the, you know. Anyway. Well, so do other Christians. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Muslims, and like, you know, they're, you save sex for marriage. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. anyway. Um, so I'm, um, but yeah, so. Yeah. Back to the <laughs> article at right. hand. Um, so I'm assuming these are Christians. So I'm just curious, like, why they would allow this at the school. And then, you know, the Bible does warn us about messing with these things. I always think of Deuteronomy 18. And if you guys, side note, if you have not, you guys should be following Doreen Virtue on YouTube. Hmm. Um, and you should be following her on um, Instagram. And I do know Doreen sometimes... I like her, and I do realize sometimes she says stuff, and you're like, okay, Doreen, it's a little much. <laughs> but I do think, I mean, most of the stuff she says is, like, I, everything she said, I will say, is backed by scripture, and I think she would know. So, Doreen, I don't know if you, do you know Doreen? No, I don't. So, she used to be, like, high up at New Age. Like, hmm. there, she created, like, angel cards. Like, hmm. she was, like, wrote all these books. She was really into it, and then she had a beautiful conversion to hmm. Christianity, denounced everything, and now she, like, warns people about, wow. like, occult practices. And um, sometimes she'll post, like, different things of, like, beware of, da 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 da, -da. And sometimes I look at the list and be like, okay, Doreen, I don't know if this mm -hmm. is really what you think it is, but I do think like something as the whole purpose of a Ouija board is to contact the dead, and we see um, right here, Deuteronomy 18. I'm gonna read it. Um, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son and daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or cast spells, or who's a medium, or spiritualist, or who consults the dead. So we do see it's clear that, like, God does not want us to use Ouija boards. For sure. That we can, For sure. you know, say. And it's because of things like spirits. Mm -hmm. I'm also interested when they say anxiety. 
what exactly does that mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I imagine that's pro- that's probably part of the reason that this made the news. Like, I feel like the word anxiety yeah. is, like, such a the cool... Buzz word. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, oh my gosh, I have anxiety, you know? Everybody loves talking about their anxiety, and yeah. we love talking about what causes anxiety. Yeah. So I wonder if that's part of the reason that this was covered. Yeah. I can't imagine it was Christian reasons that no. this was covered. Oh, no. I don't think they care about that. And it's also interesting, 30, because, like, I guess one or two, you're like, oh, that's just a weird coincidence. Right. But 30? Yeah. I guess that's... Especially depending on the size of the school. So if it was 30 girls in my school... So I graduated with 83 people, and half of those people were girls. And if there were 30 of us that had anxiety that in my class yeah. and I mean that's you know all the girls in my class pretty much yeah so I am curious like that's probably also too why right. they're like okay there has to be some correlation something's happening and I'm curious if like the anxiety I'm thinking of um I was acquaintances we're no longer friends but I was acquaintances mm-hmm. with um this girl and I kind of mentioned this earlier and she is not a Christian she doesn't really believe in all of this Mm -hmm. But she does believe in, like, the supernatural because she had an experience with the Ouija board when she was younger. And she said she definitely, there was an entity in her house. Yeah. She said something like, there was an entity in her house. She absolutely believes it completely. And it took a long time for them to get the entity out. Mm. So I'm curious, too, like, when they say anxiety, is it, like, people just, I'm thinking, like, fear. This says anxiety attacks, fainting spells, and other symptoms. So... It sounds pretty serious. Yeah. And fainting, I guess, too. Like, if, you know, you're sitting in class and five girls pass out, then you're like, okay, something's not right. For sure. For sure. Yeah, all I'm seeing is anxiety attacks for now. But that's I'm, I, I want to follow the story because I want to hear, like, what comes out of this. Like, what is the... What do they find? Yeah. What do they do? That's so heartbreaking. I mean, you imagine these young girls are probably just doing it, like... For fun Mm -hmm. or to to find answers. And it probably comes from a relatively, like, I would argue a okay place. In a sense, I think it's, especially if they're, it says high school, are they, yeah, no, just the school girls. So I wonder how old they are. Let me see. The the image kind of looked like our age. It looked like a, like a. a So maybe like, okay, so I'm over here thinking these are like 10 year olds. So it could be like, (laughs) it could be college students even. Yeah. Oh, oops. But still. I mean, mean, still that's important, but. Yeah, really sad, really sad. This says parents, many parents blame. Okay, no, that's like high school. Maybe middle school. Yeah. Yeah, that's like high school, middle school. Well, Um, what I was going to say is, like, this is one of the reasons why, you know, God asks us not to, um, mess around with this because, you know, spirits and, um, demons, all of that stuff is real. Now, every time I know, like, growing up, my, and it definitely is a Southern, especially a Southern black thing, like, you know, the TV's not working. Oh, God, that's the devil. We're trying to do something. That's the devil. So, yeah, okay. I am willing to concede that maybe that's a little bit dramatic. Yeah. But, you know, there's times where... Oops. Oh, my gosh. Technical difficulties? Um, okay. Anyway, um, so there's, like, times where it's absolutely, definitely, um, there's something supernatural. There's something outside that we cannot explain. Mm-hmm. And I think that, as Christians, we really need to be cautious about that. Yeah. Um. Mainly because God tells us not to mess with it. And then also, like, I think for me, I don't like messing with that stuff because I don't want to say out of fear because we have God on our side. So mm-hmm. no matter what, we will always overcome. But I also don't actually feel as if, you know, if there was a, a demon came running in here, just an example, mm-hmm. that probably wouldn't happen. If a demon comes running in here, I would think, okay, say the name of Jesus. But I also don't feel like equipped, like, not that there's yeah. other things you could do, but like, you know, if yeah. my pastor were to come, I'd be like, all right, buddy, you got yeah. this. And that's on me because, you yeah. know, everybody should be able to do this. Like, God calls us to do that. So now that I'm even speaking it out loud, it's like, oh, so you're saying I need we to should learn all more. be able to, like, look in evil's eyes yeah. and reject it. Yes, we all should be able to. I don't think we all mm-hmm. can because we're not all there. And I'll admit, like, I'm not to that point where, like, 
if a demon, an actual demon. You can't go committing any exorcism. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) I'm going to be the one. You got it. I'll be the lookout. (laughs) I... I won't participate. Like, I don't even want to be in the same room with it. Yeah. And I've been like that since I was a kid, too. Like, I don't even really like scary movies. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll watch, like, thrillers. Like, I love a good thriller. Mm-hmm. A serial killer? Oh, interesting. Yes. But, like, something with ghosts? Oh, can't do it. Can't do it. That's funny. I've always found ghosts so fascinating. Yeah, that's what my brother is. He likes that stuff. We saw Creed, and there's a trailer. Have you seen the trailer for the movie Boogeyman? Mm-mm. Oh, my goodness. I, like, screamed. It's, <laughs> it's literally... And, the part, I guess, also, too, like, the part that, like, creeps me out about that movie specifically is it's something that, like, is only in the dark. Mm. And that's so relatable. Like, how many times you in the dark and you literally can't see anything? For sure. For sure. <sighs> anyway, okay. so next, next story. story? <laughs> Y'all don't mess with Ouija boards and things like that. The Bible tells us not to. Yeah. Okay, so next story. I'm going to play this video um, that... I want you guys to hear, and then we're going to discuss it. Um, Okay. This is a video that was going around Twitter. So how much are you railing in on OnlyFans? (laughs) Drop it. Drop it. it. Um, (laughs) Like, the first, so I started in May 2021. Um, Did you do, like, a hard launch? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Um, Until, like, October, this past October, Mm -hmm. I would make, like, like, 100 to 150K a month. And, and then I made it a TikTok. So, you know, you guys know Anna Paul, obviously. Yes, yes. So she made this TikTok of her, like, filming a day in her life as an OnlyFans creator. Mm-hmm. And she started it off with, like, so I'm a sex worker. And I was like, oh, that's, like, great. Like, I don't know why. Because I like, had so many views. I was yeah. like, oh, my God, I want to do that. So I made, like, a vlog, like, and I started it off with that. And I vlogged, like, me getting ready for my OnlyFans shoot. And it did so fucking well, like, in October, this past October. Mm-hmm. Um, so now it's, like... Like three hundred and fifty a month. <laughs> Are you crazy. serious? What do you? Well, I guess you go to Harry Styles concerts. What else yeah. do you do? I guess we don't really need to hear the rest. Yeah, because we all know what we would do with three hundred fifty thousand dollars a month. <sighs> so, I wanted to discuss that. I think. Oh, you want me to go first? You want to go first? Well, my initial thought, my yeah. initial reaction was, and we can get into the apologetics of it, but my initial reaction, I just like. I feel, I really feel like a sickness in my gut. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when your stomach drops, Mm -hmm. I have like this immense anxiety, like stress and my heart's racing. Yeah. Hearing that. Yeah. Why? Why do you think that is? I think it's just because, I think it's just, if it's that feeling where you're like, oh my gosh. You know, you can just, you just, it's like you're watching something fall. Yeah. You know? And there's nothing. society or? I don't know, this girl. Yeah. And like her friends and this conversation. And and you're just, and there's nothing you can do. And it's like, you feel like your hands are tied and you're just watching something fall. That's all I know how to describe it as. And there's nothing you can do. And you're the only one that is noticing this is falling. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say. Because from our perspective, because that's the other thing, too. When this, so this was on a, another girl's podcast. There are two girls that have a podcast. Sound familiar? Um, and this was on. We are not the same. We are not the same. So, like, that's, so you're going to get a different perspective here than there. You know, someone tells us that we're not going to respond the same. And it's because of our worldview, because we understand the importance and values of sex, the values of um, our bodies. Our bodies. Um, and I think that, so like me, my initial thought was like, you know, your thought was very, very compassionate and I want to be better because my initial thought was $350,000. Man, that's a lot of money. Like, mm-hmm. how do you... How can I go up to this girl and say, right. come join my life? Right. You know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I thought. Like, I was just like, I, how do you talk to someone? How do you compare to them? Yeah. You can't. There is not, I don't care how smart you are. I don't care what you can do with your hands, like building a, something or another. You're not going to make $350,000 a month. Yeah. You're just not. There's yeah. nothing that compares. So what it has to be is like, because in my head, I'm like, she's doing it for the money. She's not doing it because she enjoys it. I'm sorry you can't convince me. I'm sure there's people who they 
convince themselves. They convince themselves they enjoy it. it. But you, like, innately, we want, because our, for example, our female organs are inside. Mm -hmm. So we innately want to not necessarily cover Mm -hmm. up, like, oh, no, but, Mm -hmm. like, we want to keep a little bit of something of us. You know, secret. Unlike like men. Whose unlike men. Are just out there. Exactly. That's why they think they can take off their shirt yeah. um, just standing. I mean, yeah. my brother, not to like put him under the bus, but sometimes we'll be at home and I'll be like, there's no reason for you not to have a shirt on. <laughs> there is absolutely no reason there needs to be a shirt on right now. But, you know, like that's yeah. how their bodies are. And naturally, we want to like cover our breasts, mm-hmm. cover our private parts below. Mm-hmm. Um, so, She's not doing it because she's like, oh, I must absolutely do this. People are doing it because of the money. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have to have the world view. I mean, listening to those girls, if you keep listening to the episode, they're kind of like, man, how do I get into it? Because you have mm-hmm. to have something in you that you can only really get through God mm-hmm. to help you realize that, like, it's just not worth it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would love three hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I a month, not even. I mean, I'd love it as a sum right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I already know what I would do with it. You know, you wouldn't have to work. You wouldn't have to worry about it right. for me. Like, you know, I, I know exactly what I'd do with it. But like, there is something in you that has to say, okay, this is not worth it. There's something else, and I just want to. And this is going to be an ongoing conversation because I really want to figure out how do we do that? I mean, yeah. how do I tell? Because I'm thinking about, um, if you guys saw the movie Hustlers, uh, Lily Reinhardt played a girl who didn't have a family. She really wanted money. So she joined the Hustlers. So these were strippers that were like drugging men and like taking their money. So she joined them because she wanted a family. She wanted money. She never grew up. She never had that experience. Like, mm-hmm. I want to say even her father abused her in the movie. So it's like she, so how do I tell that girl, come over here, come to this side. Yeah, it's okay. You make $7 an hour. Right. Uh, yeah. You'll just have to live with your parents for a couple more years. Yeah. Like how do you tell someone that? Um, and you kind of can't, you have to, there has to be something in them to realize like, okay, yeah. this is not right. Like this is where I draw the line. Yeah, and it feels like the deeper you get into, like, I mean, she's going to continue to make money. She yeah. Wants, she's going to want to make that 500 grand a month. Yeah. And then it's not going to be good enough until it's 750 yeah. grand a month. So it's like the deeper you get into it, the harder it is to get out. And then that means the even more of a miracle it's going to take for you to get out. Mm-hmm. Especially so... It's this girl, I don't know porn stars, I never, um, that wasn't a a thing I struggled with, but she's, like, apparently a famous porn star. She was on this podcast I was listening to, and she left, um, and she is not a Christian, or, it sounds like she's on that way, she's on track, but she's not a Christian, and, um, she was, she left because she said it was just so awful and part of the reason why she hated it was because she had someone else like in charge or something like that like it wasn't really like a manager a manager and she that was part of it and she didn't like who she was becoming blah 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 what concerns me is they've taken that out and made it so personal yeah because these girls are like oh i'm a business owner yeah and you know we're not anti-capitalism but like this is the result of capitalism there's a product and there's demand you're serving the product here's the thing how are we to and, you know, I personally, I don't know if this is Freeman's standpoint, and I wouldn't say it's a podcast altogether standpoint, I personally would love to abolish um, pornography in all forms. How will we enforce it? I don't know. I'm just saying that's something I would like to see in, the, in an ideal world. Um, so, you know, people are saying they're like, girl, bought like, I own my own business, and you, you kind of do. So, like, that's what's concerning me is, like, with these OnlyFans is that there's, um, I feel like there's less... And you don't have to see the person. You don't right. have to be with anyone else. You don't want to. And my concern is like, there's going to be less. A lot of people, I feel like now are leaving the porn industry. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's not going to have the same type of people leaving as it right. is the porn industry. Because like, right. you can do it by yourself. Right. But here's the other kicker of it. My brother and I always um, talk about, not always, but like, we've talked about this. The average girl in OnlyFans is not making $350,000 mm-hmm. a month. I want to say, he sent me a podcast they were talking about, I want to say the average is making like a hundred maybe. Yeah. Look it up really quick. Yeah. It's, it's not a lot and it's oversaturated. 
Yeah, one hundred and fifty dollars uh, a month. And I mean, not to like make light of it, but imagine doing all that stuff and only making a hundred and fifty one dollars. Yeah. Month. Oh my gosh. And like, guys, that's sad. If you are like struggling that bad for one hundred and fifty one dollars a month, come with me and I'll show you how to do DoorDash. Yeah. Like, I can make that in a day. I can help you. We'll make some jewelry. Like, yeah. I don't know. We can do something. Like, seriously. There is other options. Um, and it's like the girls are joining to make that 350 Because I don't know how it feels to do MLMs. You know, you join. We'll definitely do an episode on that. You join the MLM and they're like, oh, it doesn't. you just make $10 that month. That's okay. Keep going. Keep going. And then you get to like month 56 and you're like, okay. I haven't really, I'm still making $10 a month, Mm -hmm. but you're still in so deep. You're already doing it. So I know that it's not the exact same, you know, because I was not selling my body, but like, it's that same type of like, you got to keep, I'm trusting Yeah, stay on the ground. You got to keep going. It's just $151, but no, because you're thinking, you see that person with the 350K, you're like, okay, I can get to that. I can get to that. Yeah. And it's just not, you know, not. That's $5 a day. Yeah, that's not... It's not worth it. Not worth I mean, it. And not not to say that 350 grand is, but it's certainly not, but $151... And that's the for, average. The average. So there's people making less. Right. I, don't do it. I, it's not worth it. There are so many other options. And I think really what... Ha- like I said, there has to be something in you to realize, like, this is not worth it. There are other options. And I think... We have to also realize, like, sometimes life is a struggle, and I go, like, I've had to work on that in myself. Like, life is going to have ups and downs, because when you have a really, there was a season where I was up, 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 I win, 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 but, like, inevitably, because, I mean, the Bible talks about it, inevitably, there's going to be seasons where you're lose, 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 Mm -hmm. like, you're just not going to, where you have to, you can't catch a break, and that's just, life goes up and down like this. The Bible mm-hmm. talks about it, there's season and time for everything. Like, that just happens. So I think sometimes you have to, when you're in the down season, you have to, like, still keep your mindset, your morals, mm-hmm. your values that you have in the up season. Yeah. Because it's very, very easy yeah. to, and I'll be honest, especially when it comes to, like, sexual things. Like, even in abstinence, you know, you haven't touched yeah. a man, and I mean even kiss. Yeah. You haven't kissed a man in months. Um, so you're in your down season. It's easy. Um, it's easy when you're dating someone and both of you are like, "We're going to do this together." Yeah. It's harder when you're not dating someone and you meet someone and they don't want to do it. Mm. So it's like, even in your down season, you got to make sure that you're still keeping your morals, your values, right. keeping your eyes focused on what you were doing in your up season. For sure, I love that. Yeah, that's a message for somebody. Definitely. Yeah, so, that's yeah. really heartbreaking, and I'm hoping there's a day when I. I'm just so confused why people think this is empowering. I know. I can't imagine. Someone's literally, like, it's, you're being used. You're being bought. You're bought and sold like a material good. Yeah. Your body. You're the only body you have. Yeah. I don't get it. And, you know, I don't want to be one of those people, men, 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 but, like, come on. She's she's not giving herself $350,000. I mean, I, no, absolutely. Probably married men. Oh goodness. Don't even get me thinking about that. Yeah. This, like, come are on. There, where's the, those other boys podcast? Literally. If you're a boy, those are the boys. Y'all need to be talking about this to your guys. Yeah. You guys, you guys are. Yeah. You got we Cause we're trying to do our part. Let's help the women. Yeah. And we're, I love that we're holding women to a standard, but yes. let's also talk about the fact that like prostitutes, they're not just there making money on their own. Right. They're there because men on business trips who are away from their wives yes. want a fun night. Yes. And I was listening to this podcast. And don't care how old they are. That's a very good point, too. Don't check IDs. Nope. God. I was listening to this podcast, um, and they were talking about how um, they had... The person on the podcast was reading an article. They had interviewed some sort, like a prostitute, and the prostitute said they can always tell when there's like a recession because there'll be less men yes. coming. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because like, dang, is are so many people are doing that that like it, it's having an effect. Yeah. Like, and the sexual revolution is kind of what started this. And um, how do we combat that? Like, what do we need to be doing? Like, we we have to come up with some solutions. Yeah. 
we were talking earlier and I really keep thinking about um that idea I was saying I don't want to say it just yet that idea I was saying I'm like yeah. how do I get this on the like at least start a little bit because something needs to be done something needs to be done I don't think that every prostitute I don't think that every OnlyFans girl is just this like sex fiend yeah. that just wants to I'm just, a, yeah, I'm just a sexual being because you know, people yeah. say oh, I'm just a sexual being I'm just expressing my sexuality I don't think every one of them is like that and even the ones like that are not like that as much as they like think they, they are are they really going to tell their fathers they're doing this right right yeah so it. right so I think there just needs to be something else and we got to figure out yeah. what that something else is yeah I think it's a convenience thing. It I is. can do something from my home, yeah. be my own boss, choose what I put out there, choose what I don't, and make good money doing it. Like, that's a win-win, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, what can we bring to the table that's just as, you know, good and, va- and me- meaningful and valuable and profitable, Yeah, but... You don't have to... Sell your soul. Yeah. And change up your morals. So that's, I mean, what it is, it goes back to morals and your values. Where is the line for your morals and your values? Yeah. Um, and if your morals and your values, if that line is here, you don't decide, you decide it's okay to cross it, then yeah, there you are. Well, then what's stopping you from crossing that line and then the next line? And that's how all of this stuff happens. Okay. That's sad. Um, that's sad. We're going to do our next story that's brought to you by Garnu, which is wonderful because it is Women's Month and they are a women's girls only product care, period care product brand. Their Garnu tampons are made with 100% cotton core. And if you guys are following them, they keep talking about they're going to have their pads soon, which is like for me. Um, so it's 100% cotton core. Each subscription supports feminine hygiene training, and female entrepreneurship to Nepali women and girls who are vulnerable for trafficking. So that's another great wow. bonus about it. You can listen to Macy, who's the founder. She, I interviewed her for episode 145, and she talked about, like, why we should switch over to organic tampons. She talked about um, why she started Garnu, and just, we even got into a little bit, some of the, you know, men being ambassadors for tampon like how weird that is um so yeah so if you head to www.garnu g-a-r-n-u-u dot com and use the code othergirls10 you can get 10% off your purchase sweet okay so the next story we're going to take a longer time to talk about um wow we're almost at 40 minutes so probably not too long but we're gonna take a longer time to talk about because um a couple of you asked us to talk about it and we should discuss it absolutely so i'm gonna try to break down the majority of the article um and i think it's just something um that we need to discuss and when you're talking to your friends about we want to give you guys some tips and some things um Mm -hmm. that we've learned okay so this is an npr article Five Texas women are denied abortion, sue the state, saying the ban puts them in danger. Okay. I'm going to read a little bit, and then we'll discuss and then read a little bit more. Five women were denied abortions under Texas law while facing medical cries at... Sorry, let me start over. Five women were denied abortion under Texas law while facing medical crises are suing the state, asking a judge to clarify exceptions to the laws. The women, or quote, the women have been denied necessary and potentially life-saving obstetrical Mm -hmm. care Mm -hmm. because medical professionals throughout the state fear liability under Texas's abortion bans, says the lawsuit filed in court by the Center for Reproductive Rights on behalf of the five women and doctors. Just because Roe versus Wade is no longer the law of the land does not mean that women and pregnant people, pregnant people, are without constitutional and basic human rights, says Molly Duane. We're talking about people who are in medical emergencies, who need urgent medical care, and whose physicians are too scared to provide the care because of the state laws and because of the state's failure to provide any clarification around what it what the law means. Okay, so we can stop there for a second and talk about that. Well, it seems like um, a fair question, I would say. Like, what are the exceptions, if any, to this law? 
um, a quick look on the Texas PDF um, of the bill <laughs> will show you that there are exceptions for um, medically necessary in instances. But I think it's a fair question. Like, what what is a medically necessary thing? And I think that the Texas bill leaves that ambiguous for a reason. Because legislatures don't know. Physicians do. Like, yeah. I don't know. Other than, like, ectopic pregnancy, like, preeclampsia. Yeah. A few things. Like, I think it intentionally leaves room for medical providers to decide that. So, um, it's sad that there is so much confusion over that and and no i absolutely don't want to see women dying um i don't want to see children dying either yeah i think that you you're right i think that there is room for us to discuss and clarify what exceptions would be so we talked about how um spontaneous abortion is written uh, a miscarriage is written as a spontaneous abortion. So in my head, I'm thinking that could probably be because th- we talked about this. The DNC procedure is the same um, mm-hmm. as with moving a dead fetus and a live fetus. Um, so I think that also has to do with some of the wording. Um, and I think that this is where we really discuss these laws. And we have to, I think as pro-lifers, Sometimes we're so like big picture. We're like, all right, let's get rid of abortion altogether. Gung ho. Yes, mm-hmm. which we absolutely should be. But this is where it gets to like the, the more nitty-gritty. the nitty gritty, the more details part of it, the enforcement. Because you know, there needs to be, if we're going to say this is the law, there needs to be enforcement, um, and there also needs to be like you clarity. were saying clarity. So ectopic pregnancy. We talked about how. Technically, an ectopic pregnancy is not an abortion. We discussed that on the podcast before. So, you know, if someone has an ectopic pregnancy, get that baby out. We, mm-hmm. we Get the fetus out. We have to. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, I think it's, it does, there needs to be clarity. I think it, there is room for there to be discussion. And I don't think that, I don't even think that the people, the pro-lifers of Texas are like, no, let's not discuss. Just do, just do. I think it's like, okay. Let's clarify. I I will say this. I am... I want to make sure... I think these women, most if not all of the women and the doctors, are sincere. I do think there are people... There are probably some doctors who kind of want to use this as like a... All right, let's see if we can get the pro-lifers. And I think that's dangerous. I think that making abortion a political issue instead of keeping it as a human rights issue Mm -hmm. was a terrible mistake. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, we have to, there has to be laws, so we Mm -hmm. have to make it a political issue. But like, I think, uh, I just hate that it's become like a political issue because people are using people like doctor, if your doctor does not understand what an ectopic pregnancy is and does not understand to remove the baby then like okay that that doesn't sound like a good doctor yeah like i feel like that's that's a no-brainer i mean i'm sure there's instances i can't think of a particular one right now but i'm sure there's instances where it's it truly is on the line and but you're I, not trying to you don't know but like i just i don't like the idea the thought that like someone could be using this opportunity to make a political point you know well and i don't think the question is like should in cases of an ectopic pregnancy we remove the baby i think the question is can we under texas's law but what i'm saying is yes you can because according to section 171.205 there are quote exceptions for medical emergencies quote certain laws within this bill do not apply if a physician believes a medical emergency exists that prevents compliance with this subchapter and then it goes into the procedures that a physician would have to take so a physician who performs or induces an abortion under circumstances or under circumstances described by subsection a shall make written notations in the pregnant woman's medical record of one Physician's belief that a medical emergency necessitated the abortion. And two, the medical condition of the pregnant woman that prevented compliance with this subchapter. So the bill goes through what to do if this is the case. Yeah. 
But I think, Mallory, I think that the reason there's so much confusion is because of the media. Like, I, yeah. I'm sure you've heard Texas's no exception bill yeah. harms women. Like, and then you look at the actual bill yeah. on the Texas.gov website, and there are exceptions. Like, for example, Vanity Fair, quote, Greg Abbott claims Texas's no exception abortion law is fine. Bloomberg, but we just read the exception. Exactly. Keep going. Bloomberg.com. Many are concerned that there are no exceptions. The Texan, quote, Dan Patrick says abortion law exceptions are unlikely this legislative session. So there's a lot there's, there's a lot of rhetoric yeah. saying there are no exceptions. And I guess in my head I'm like, well, the doctors should know, but I, I mean, you're right, though. Like, the media is the one feeling this. I, the media is definitely feeling it for people, but I'm like, did, did, are the doctors reading these articles, or are they reading the laws? Right. Like, who, is right. someone coming by? Because uh, I remember my dad has done this a couple of times, uh, like, when Obamacare was coming out or something like that. He would go and talk to... Um, to go to the doctor's office and like break everything down because he's wow. a lawyer so he could break down the whole law thing so i'm like i'm sure somebody did that with the texas law right mm -hmm. wouldn't that make sense but you're right though like maybe not because i mean even um so the bill that's coming out in south carolina um there are exceptions on that and um but like if you look at anything if you google like south carolina abortion laws people like there's no exceptions they're gonna they're even gonna kill you and yeah. it's like no actually like read the bill like yeah. they're if you actually read the bill that's not true right <laughs> um but you're right all the media does and that's why once again and i feel like i say this all the time but like that's why we need to be saying something we need to be speaking out we need to maybe i'll be able to copy and paste that section in our um in the show notes the little blog yeah. thing we do so if you are talking to somebody about it you can be like oh here it is and then yeah. you can maybe send them the link for sure um because like that's that's why we have to say something that's why we need to speak up because there's just so many lies and like it's the lies are affecting people's lives for sure and and we are not we we are not expecting women to die we don't want women to die we don't want children to die we don't want anyone dying yeah um and we are in favor of clarification yes and i also want to know and I don't, I don't want this to sound mean. I don't mean it in, like, a rhetorical question. I actually am asking. But if these women were experiencing near-death experiences, then how... And they were denied abortion. Right, that's a good point. Then how are they here today suing? Yeah, that's a good point. Or was it really not article. a near-death experience? That's a good point. If it was truly and they didn't receive it. So they definitely received it. Let me see. I don't think they got an abortion. They It says they were denied an abortion. So if they were oh, yeah, denied an abortion uh, and they're alive and well today suing, then how was it actually? That's such a good question that I never, that never crossed my mind. I wonder... If they're, like, exaggerated, like, it was an almost, or I'm thinking maybe it was even, like, they were going to die, they didn't die, or, like, maybe, I don't know. That's well, a good point. I, I'm, like, trying I, to think how, if. And then I want to know, like, okay, so they had their children. When they look into their children's eyes, do they wish they had an abortion? Right. And imagine your mom, you go on TV, you see your mom talking about, I was supposed to get an abortion. And, and I, I wish I did. Yeah. I should have gotten one. I should have been able to get the abortion. And you're yeah. like, okay, yeah, that's, that's such a good point. That's exactly what I'm, that's like one of my first thoughts. Okay, here's the story. I haven't read the story yet, but here's the story in the same article. You scroll down. Um, it says, somebody's going to die eventually. That's the headline or like the, how it broke up the paragraphs. Two of the plaintiffs on the new lawsuit have previously told their stories to NPR. For a story published in early 2022, just months before SB8 took effect, Zar Garian spoke to NPR. I'm just going to call him Zar. Um, spoke to NPR using only her first name out of fear of 
repercussions for herself or, or her doctor. She agreed to go public with her full name as a part of the lawsuit. Zar's doctors denied her an abortion after her water broke at 19 weeks, too early for the fetus to survive. Fearing for the prospect of severe infection, she flew to Colorado okay. for a termination. Got it. Zar told NPR that she came for it because, quote, it's important to share the story because somebody is going to die eventually, end quote. And the months that followed, more Texas patients with medically complex pregnancies were turned away, and several of those faced life-threatening conditions. Miller and a second patient, Ashley Brandon, each faced complica complicated twin pregnancies, and which the doctors told them that terminating one twin would offer the best chances to preserve the life and health of the other twin, as well as the pregnant woman. Four of the five women ultimately left Texas to seek abortions Got in it. other states, Got it. among Colorado and Washington. Well, that's really sad. I cannot, and this is just a side note, I cannot imagine how awful that would feel if a doctor said, well, um, you know, if you kill one, it'll help save the other. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, I, that's just awful. Um, okay, so once again, like, so she said, Zar was saying that after her water broke at 19 weeks, too early for the fetus to survive, fearing the prospect of severe infection, she flew to Colorado for termination. I would like to know more. I just yeah. feel like we're missing some more context because if the water broke at 19 weeks, I am 98% sure I've heard stories of women going in and then them trying to see how what they can do to fix it. Or you can still deliver a baby. You now the baby might mm -hmm. die, but but it's you, better than you. Then I mean, at that point, you have to rip the baby, like dismember. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You can deliver the baby. So I am like I feel like there's context missing, but that's on purpose. That's on purpose to make to fear. And oh, this also brings me uh, reminds me of this. As women, we hear these stories whether you're pro-life or pro-abortion and your heart goes out to these people because that's just, that's yeah. how we are. We're, women, we're nurturing. So when we're having these conversations, it's also really good just to make sure that we're like, you know, be honest and real. Like that sounds, that's so sad. That sounds awful. Um, but once again, we, we're missing context because I'm 98% sure I've heard, I've read stories, I've heard stories, um, especially over the last couple of years as I've, you know, done pro-life activism of women whose waters have broken and they've been able to like be in the hospital and figure it out for a couple of weeks and then deliver the baby. Sometimes the baby has passed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, the baby, you know, 19 weeks is technically too early, but you know, if the baby stays in a, the young, the earliest is 20 weeks, the baby mm -hmm. stays in two or three more weeks, maybe some more, you, something else could happen. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely believe that there needs to be more clarity. Mm -hmm. Um, I would really love to learn more about this topic because I am not, I'm still not getting it. I'm yeah. still not understanding why. Like, I think it also has to do with our actual, like the word abortion. To some people, so too. it means the intentional mm -hmm. celebration of ceremoniously ending a human life mm -hmm. to other people. It just, it means when a baby is not born. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when we hear like, like we would say abortion is never medically necessary because you never need to intentionally kill someone Yeah. in order to live I don't know, like your career. Yeah, something. yeah, you know yeah, say? yeah, yeah. Versus, like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't consider it an abortion, like removing an ectopic pregnancy, right? Even right. Even though, in a lot of probably medical terms, it is. Yes, I on TikTok you hear people, everybody's always commenting, well, ectopic pregnancies, but that's not an abortion. And I, you're right. I think it's the intent. It's the intent. And someone actually asked on the TikTok, so are you saying it's the intent? I'm like, yes, that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. And I do think you're making a valid point that that's not what everybody means. And we need to get on the same page. And I don't think we're in the wrong. And I don't right. think we should budge either. Like, But we all do need to be on the same page of like, what is an abortion? Because when we're not on the same page about this, um, 
you know, we have right. all of these complications. All this confusion. Yeah. Well, guys, let us know what you think. When you hear the word abortion, do you think of, like, an elective, yeah. you know, situation? Or do you think of, like, I would say, like, or would you say it's any time when a child doesn't make it? Yeah. Or a fetus or a clump of cells, whatever is convenient yeah. for you. A smaller clump of cells than yeah. us as clumps of cells. Right. Um, And then I'll just read this other part and then we'll wrap it up. This part is about the doctor's. Two doctors, Namla and Judy, also are suing the state on behalf of themselves and their patients. The lawsuit notes that the doctors who violate Texas abortion bans can face severe penalties. Good. With the threat of losing their medical license, fines of hundreds of thousands of dollars, and up to 99 years in prison lingering over their heads, it's no wonder that doctors and hospitals are turning patients away, even if patients are in medical emergencies, the suit reads. Faced with comp complaints from doctors who say they're unable to provide abortions in emergency situations for fear of running afoul of state law, some abortion rights opponents have accused medical groups of failing to help doctors make sense of what the law that's required. Speaking to NPR last year, John Ciego of Texas Right to Life, a major force in pushing SB 8 through the state legislature, said it was politically advantageous for some of these bills that oppose for some of the groups that oppose the bill to just say this is unreasonable and i think that's really like now reading this and honestly that story i just told about my dad remembering that like that is what it takes and like i think mr ciego is right like people are just taking advantage of just saying like oh it's just don't worry about a doctor it's just so terrible instead of being like no doctor like this is what it is and they do it for everything else every other law that's come out um, that needs explaining. They'll have a lawyer come in, sit mm -hmm. down and explain it piece by piece. So why can't they do that for these doctors? Yeah. And sure, I understand. I, I do think doctors should face a penalty. So I understand being afraid of facing the penalty. Yeah. I get it. I wouldn't want to go to jail. And I certainly don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to give to the state. Um, but th so then don't commit the crime. Like, right. <laughs> then don't do it. Um, so yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to more clarity on this. Um, I'm looking forward to hopefully better understanding what abortion is um, and what that term means. And I hope that there's a day that we can we can come together and acknowledge that like crazy scenarios. This is th the intent behind that is not to successfully kill someone. Mm -hmm. It's we have to save one or the other. And in doing so, one person is going to die, and we're going to mourn that, and we're going to grieve that. But there's this amazing Stephanie Gray concept where if two people are, are, are drowning, I can't push you underwater in order to survive. Yeah. Because that, I would be killing you. Yes. Rather, in us both trying to survive, you die. Yes. That's not me pushing you underwater yes. for my own survival yeah so oh, that's good there's a, there's a this the outcome is the same someone dies yeah but there's not as there's a very different moral obligation yeah in one scenario than the other yeah and this is reminding me i don't necessarily know if it's like in the same vein but that just reminded me of this um, point, I don't remember who I heard say this, but they were saying how like, you know, let's say there is an issue that you have with your child. Isn't it more loving? Isn't it more of like a parent for you to at least try to birth the child in your child? Like, oh, it's like makes me almost want to cry, like dies in your arms as opposed to something worse. Well, and let's not forget miracles happen. And that's another thing too. Like, there's been people, that twin scenario, I have heard someone say something like that about twins, and then both of the twins are fine. Exactly. Um, I'll even say, I don't know if I've told you this, my brother, they went in to check his heartbeat. He didn't have a heartbeat. My parents went, got lunch, prayed, and then came back and he had a heartbeat. So, like, Whoa. if they had, you know, if you're not, if, you know, my parents weren't pro-life, or if they're a doctor, my mom yeah. always says, like, um, whenever, you know, I get married and get pregnant, to always have a pro-life doctor. Um, if they didn't, weren't pro life, like they could have been like, oh my goodness, let's get, get the baby out yeah. now. You know, there's so many miracles. There's so many people, even like, um, there's, I know tons of women who were told they could never have kids and they have like three, like God mm -hmm. opens and anyway, yeah. they're just, God 
excuse me, God does so many things. Like it's not impossible. Um, so many miracles, so many miracles. So I think that, you know, to wrap this up in a big bow, um, like we said, there is room to make sure we have some clarification. That is a fair ask. I think sometimes, like I said, we get a little nervous, like, well, what do you mean? No, it's a fair ask mm-hmm. to get some clarification. Mm-hmm. At the same time, there is some clarification. And maybe doctors, because, you know, you start talking medical stuff to me, couldn't understand it. Talk law stuff to me, I can kind of get that. Like, I can get behind that. Um, so maybe the doctors need to have things explained. But it seems as if, this is what the article say. This is what it's seeming from the outside looking in. No one's helping the doctors understand right. what's going on. So there's that aspect. The other aspect is just, um, you know, like we just said, anything is possible. Miracles can happen. And wouldn't it be better for a baby to, you know, die in someone's arms that they love? Not saying that that's easy. That sounds awful. I can't even think about that. Like, it makes me want to cry. Yeah. But isn't that better than the alternative? Uh, the child's going to die. Isn't it better to die in the loving arms than, you know, die by forcep? Yeah. And love the Stephanie Gray analogy. There's a difference between intentionally trying to drown someone and unfortunately them drowning. Mm-hmm. And that is the difference between abortion and a miscarriage, really. <laughs> like, yeah. that's literally the definition of abortion and a miscarriage. So, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um... We talked a lot today. We sure did. And it's so funny because we only did three stories, but this is probably one of the longest ones we've done. So that's what happens when you have really interesting topics. We hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure you like, review, subscribe, however you're listening. Um, Spotify now is doing, like, they have a whole rebrand. So if you're watching on Spotify, um, make sure you um, follow us. Make sure you, you know, add comments. Uh, do whatever it is that Spotify asks you to do mm-hmm. that really helps. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, they're not as cool as Spotify, but I'm sure. What? Oh, yeah, you're an Apple music person. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure, which is positive capitalism, because Spotify's rebranding, Apple's going to want to re- rebrand. Yeah. And that means even better for all of us. Yes. yes. Better entertainment and content. So if you're listening on Apple, make sure that you. Leave a rate and a review. Oh, I forgot to say, with Spotify, the question is, when you think of abortion, what was it? When you think of abortion... Do you think of... what? What's the intent behind an abortion? When you hear the word abortion... Do you think of the intent? No. When you... when you What's the intent? When you hear the word abortion, Does what the intent is the intent? Does matter? Or... I think we're asking, like, is an abortion... Does intent matter... Yeah, I think that's what we're asking. Okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, okay, so I'll type in the question is going to be, does intent matter for, no, because then it sounds like, does your, anyway, we'll figure out how the question yeah. is, but y- you answer it on Spotify. Yeah. And also answer it in the YouTube comments. Make sure you're interacting on YouTube. You guys, we are back to mainly men, not mainly, but like men the majority, and we got to get to the women. We're for women. It's because we're cute. I, you know, okay, that could be it. That I'm sure that that's a possibility. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness, we're at 63% male and 36% female. Let's switch that. We got to yeah. get back to the majority female. Um, men, thank you for watching. We really appreciate your content. I mm-hmm. mean, your um, views, but we would prefer because who we're going to, who we're targeting is um female okay so i'm curious where we're being recommended because now guess what our no. most listened to on youtube no. age no 65 plus <laughs> 55 to 64 35 to 44 45 to 54 and then um 25 to 34 and 18 to 24 what happened Okay, so she 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 listed those in order of like greatest population yeah. listening to smaller. So notice how she started with sixty five plus. That's awkward. That's interesting. I mean, we have nothing against those who fall in those categories. We just no, exactly. It's That's just confusing not the target audience. Yeah, and how you found us. I mean, if you are in those categories, let us know how you found us. I'm. I mean, I am flabbergasted. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, literally. I'm, I'm like looking like, how? What is this? Okay. I'm flabbergasted. Oh, that is. Okay. Well, I love looking at analytics. I can look at analytics all day, every day. Um, well, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, make sure you interact however you're listening. I hope you have a great night, evening, day, however, wherever you're listening. Bye. Bye.